Well, Mark, it's only been a couple of days, but I imagine the mood in the camp's pretty good after that win on Tuesday. Yeah, you know, a win always breeds a bit of confidence, and uh, yeah, the players have been in good spirits, as you'd, as you'd imagine, after such a good performance. And uh, it's just now a matter of keeping that consistency and trying to go again. Yeah, because that really was the first time you were able to get your style of play for the full 90 minutes. So I imagine you now know that they can they can do it and you want to take that into the next few games. Yeah, we've had glimpses, we've had patches and halves and 60 minutes, but not really for a full full game. Of course, um, there's moments in games that you have to defend. That's the, every team, and we did, we did that quite well. But uh, it's impossible to play your how you want to play for 90 minutes because the opposition have something to say about that and when you're playing against good teams you've got to be able to mix it up. Do you feel like the extra bodies that you've got now in midfield are making that difference and able that your passing game is improving so much? Yeah you've got to have good players to, to be able to play the, the way we want to play and we have got some some good players. Um, even more important is the athleticism you have to be able to run and uh, if you look at the team there the other night, the, the, the vast majority of that team were all very, very good athletically and able to go and get after the op opposition and put them under pressure without the ball. And um, you know, when you see young Jordan Stevens and Worthy, those kind of guys trying to press, they're real, really athletic and that, and that gives you a chance to get up the pitch, which is what we did the other night. And you must be pleased with that level of fitness with how many games there have been, it's been Saturday, Tuesday relentlessly. Yeah, there's some boys in there that have played, I don't know, the last seven or eight games and not had a breather and we've not really had a chance to give them a breather, so we have to be careful with them, we have to make sure now is just recovery and um, tactical and recovery and uh, make sure we keep them in good shape. And with those three home games, it must have been nice for you to showcase the supporters how you want to play. I think they know I want to play. It's no secret that my teams always play in a certain way, but you have to have the right um, mix to do that. And, uh, and I think, you know, look at uh, the players that, that I've brought in, that's helping the group that, that we've got. And um, I think the other night everyone can see that the players that didn't play, the players that were on the bench, the players that played, that they were together and uh, enjoyed playing like that. And the mood at the matches was really positive as well. Is that reflective in day to day here at Yeovil as well? Yeah, I think I think what what it showed me the other night was if I was a supporter, and what I would say to supporters is the energy they gave the players the other night was incredible, and it shows what a powerful thing it can be. I mean, it's easy to be negative, and, and sometimes I get it. You, you, your team don't play well. It's easy to, to boo and. But the energy that they gave the players when they needed it the other night, I thought was incredible and it's, it's a reciprocal thing. We gave the, the supporters some energy with the performance, but what they gave us maybe got us over the line. I don't know, but it's so important that there is that connection. And now you've got three away games yeah. in a row. Have you got any players that are returning from the treatment table at all that you can call upon? Um, no, it would be the same. It'll be the same squad as uh, as the other night. And you've got a lot of low knees, as we've spoken about a few times. That is nine, but is, is Jack Clark not returning anytime soon? No, we've got no no real news on Jack. He's still he's away at Chesterfield doing his rehab. Um, but listen, it, it was a case of we had to go and get some loan players in a couple of weeks because we didn't know what was happening. And we didn't have the money to to do what we, we had to get a couple of bodies in. And now we've obviously signed a couple more, so um, it's causing a problem. It's a difficult one to manage. Um, the two Bristol City boys missed out the other night. They've been incredible. Trained so hard in brilliant attitudes and done really well for us. So um, it's a tough one to manage, but it will be a similar squad to Tuesday night that, that go to Chesterfield. I suppose you've got Chesterfield and then you've got Barnet, so you're able to sort of say to them that they, they will be involved very soon. I think the, as a player, uh, you always have to be ready because you never know. Um, you just never know what's around the corner and, and you have to be ready to play because you're judged. 
you're always judged on when you play, so make sure you're ready. Um, they're a really good set of professionals, and uh, I'm sure they, they will all be ready. And Chesterfield, another really big side in this division. They seem to go through a little bit of a ropey patch of form, but seem to be back on track. Mm. But you know, you played Eastleigh, who were in fine, fine form. Mm -hmm. You must go into that in, with real confidence. Yeah, they've got some really good players, certainly in forward areas. They're, uh, they're very good. Some good football players, ball players. So we have to be really good with the ball ourselves and make sure that we have plenty of it. Because the more more the ball we have, the less chance the opposition have to score. Simple. Um, but we know we have to play really well to get a result there. The last two games were both decent performances at Gateshead and at Southend. So six points for them. And, um, and from having a bad spell, they're now, you know, sort of steps into a good spell but um, it's all about on the day they've got a brilliant manager staff and they've got an amazing set of players so the recipe for that is eventually with solid recruitment that they have um, good facilities a good manager and support from above you get success and a lot was said about the attacking play from your side on Tuesday but you also got another clean sheet so mm. again you go into that with a little bit more defensive and confidence. Yeah, it's not just about with the ball, you have to be able to do both sides of it and the other night we had to defend a lot of set pieces late on in the game, um, which we did really well and uh, football's about you have to defend, you have to attack, so to win a game is a really hard thing to do, you have to do both bits really well and, and we managed to do that on the whole the other night. How tough is it looking ahead to that schedule? We just had three home games, now you've got three away games. It's less than ideal, isn't it? I think it's important, like her will say, boring. We look at the next one, that's Chesterfield. So we deal with the weather now. What, yeah. what was the weather going to be? Is the game on? Is it off? But we can only deal with what today brings and, and make sure we prepare as well as we can. Thanks for your time, good luck. Thank you. Mark, um, we all know being a football manager carries an awful lot of pressure on you, yeah. personally. I noticed you said um, when you did your uh, post-match interview that the goal seemed to take an eternity to go in. How are you finding the pressures of it all? Because I think it's not been exactly an easy run, has it, for the last few weeks? Um, how am I finding it? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's tough. It's been difficult with what's been going on off the pitch. Um, yes, yeah, so it's not been easy, but. That's what it is. Football very rarely is. I think every club has its issues. We're no different. But, um, I enjoyed the other night. It was a bit of relief. And um, for us to play like we did, under the pressure we were under, it tells you something about the character of the players. And uh, It's not about me, it's about them really. And um, I thought they were really good. And presumably the fact that you've got such a great group of lads, which to quote you on that, um, that must help you help you doing your job. I mean, you know, if you didn't have a great group of lads, it would be that much more difficult. And, and obviously now, is, is there a sort of an air of, I was going to say complacency, that's the wrong word, but, you know, the fact that the, the sale has gone through now, I mean, do you feel a lot, is life a lot easier without that extra pressure of that going on behind you? No, it's probably harder because I now have to try and impress a, a, a different <laughs> owner, or, yeah. and so do the players. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a different pressure, but one that you know you have to try and embrace and, and take with both hands and that's what certainly what I'm going to try and do. Um, Matty Worthington uh, you know he got the winner have you targeted Matty for goals from midfield to give a little bit of pre uh, a little bit of relief I was going to say for the uh, strikers? I think Matty the position he's best in is this is an attacking midfield player um, it's not always been possible with the issues we've had um, but midfield players, attacking midfield players, or number eights as we'll call them, have to chip in with goals. You know, it's not just about uh, the forwards. Midfield players have to get five, six, seven a season, and so should the centre backs from corners. You know, we've not really hardly scored a goal from a set piece, yeah. and that's something that needs to improve. Yeah. Um, so you need goals from all over to be a successful team. But you've got a couple of you know six footers to. The Maybe you should be getting a few from corners. Of course we should, and we do yeah. enough work on it. But listen, it's about the delivery being right, and then it's about the intent to attack the ball and uh, and a bit of luck. They brought a couple of new players in um, this week. 
CVs look good. I mean, uh, you know, you, you must be pleased to have got players of that calibre. Yeah, of course, we're pleased that any good players that we can get, it it, it makes us stronger as a group. Um, so yeah, they're, um, they'll add, certainly add to the group. Mm. And finally, um, how close are Messrs Wakefield, Hunt, Clark to uh, getting back into full fitness? Uh, Wakefield's still got a sore back. Hunt is two to three weeks. Who was the other one? Clark. Um, Clark. Clark yeah. Clark's probably another couple of weeks. And is there another one? Uh, Pollock. Pollock's still not, obviously he's not ready yet. Uh, probably be another couple of weeks yet. So um, he's just returned to doing return to training and starting running again. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Well, best of luck on Saturday if you play. Um, Thank you. Hopefully you don't have a wasted trip all up there. Yeah, we're taking our snow boots. Yeah, so, uh, exactly. We're looking forward to it. Good. Well, best of luck anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Just touching back on uh, Mike Lemptos, he's got the goal and he, he touched on his fitness. He's also now got his England C uh, selection. Has he been kind of a standard performer for you this season? Yes, he has. Uh, the three sort of previous games weren't his best. Um, it's probably my fault in terms of where he played. Uh, but he deserves it. He's been great. Since I, I know Matt, I know he played for me at Forest Green, so I think I know what makes him tick. And, and to get the best out of him. And, and that was it the other night running forward. Him and Jordan Stevens have so much pace and athleticism that um, they can cause the opposition problems. And it's been a common theme of your kind of signing as well this season. You've gone for quite youthful. Is that for that athleticism and also so you can mould them to kind of how you want them to play? A lot of that is before it comes down to cost. The younger ones are usually cheaper. So if we wanted to go and get a a good number eight that could run and pass it. We're not being that for we we can't afford him at Yeovil. Well, we haven't been able to. So uh, younger players are generally cheaper because they need or want the experience, and um, and they can be more receptive to playing a certain style of football. And you, you've mentioned you feel a bit more under pressure because of you've got to impress new people that have come in. But do you feel a little bit freer now that you've got support behind you? Um, in terms of. Just financial backing out and someone's going to help kind of build this club the way you want to build it as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, the previous owner supported me, I have to say that. Um, and the guys have had sort of initial discussions about where, where they want to go, how they see it, um, and it will be a different way. Um, but yeah, they're really enthusiastic and they want to make the club great again. And um, that's what we all want. You know, when you, when you see the other night, the stadium as it was, that's, every player commented on that and how much easier it was to play in the atmosphere than what we've done really well in on the whole at home before and full credit to the fans, they're back and uh, full credit to the players as well.